I've always loved vans, and this was my first van. It provided freedom and liberation, took me all over the UK and all over Europe. And you could be forgiven for thinking I was urban surfing, I wasn't, I was simply observing some of the best scenery in the Yorkshire Dales at the time. In my case, I called it a mobile man cave, a den on wheels, a mobile man shed, but it served me well and gave me endless hours of fun. While I was serving in the army, I found myself moving to Germany. And in order to make best use of that country, a wonderful gateway to Europe, I acquired a new van. And the van was always pre-packed. I always had rations in the back, often supplied by a friendly quartermaster. I had 12 man days worth of 24 hour ration packs in the back of the vehicle. And it meant on a Friday afternoon, I could iron my uniform, jump into the van and head down the autobahn, down to Vienna, all over the place, Italy, Bavaria, Winterberg and Mittenwald. And it was my aim to see Germany and Europe for myself and make the most of life, rather than seeing Germany through the bottom of a beer glass. So I made the most of it. And one memory in particular, I was down by the Moselle Valley in a campsite and I had the side door open of the van and I could hear the gentle hum of a German barge floating down the river on an evening. It was a wonderful memory, wonderful times in the vehicle. I'd left the military in January 2012, and two years later, after 24 years of service, I, I joined the army at 16, served 24 years, and popped out of the green machine 24 years later. And two years into my time in civi civil street, civilian life, I was struggling. And I'm quite happy to say that I was struggling it's okay to say that you're struggling or you have struggled because there are other people out there who may benefit from your story and your insight. And I was dealing with civilian life, trying to make sense of it all, dealing with self-employment. What I didn't realize was I was burning myself out. I was working uh, too late, too long. I was worried about my father who was going in for a skin cancer operation and I lost a mother to cancer while I was in the army and a brother to anaphylactic shock while I was serving in the army as well. And I thought I was going to lose the only family I had. And things came to a head. I started having heart palpitations. I was feeling very, very wired. And ultimately thought I was gonna have a heart attack. So I ended up taking the logical approach, or so I thought. And on an evening, sometimes I would drive down to the A&E car park at Tunbridge Wells Hospital. And rightly or wrongly, my logic was that if I have a heart attack, I might as well be outside the front door. I took action, and it's important to take action. Rightly or wrongly, if it's action, take action and do the right thing. Because we learned by it. And for me, being in the back of the van in that a &E car park was a form of shelter, a form of safety. And we all need shelter and safety. Sometimes we've got to go and find it and got to go and create it. Thankfully, I recovered from that, that process. I was labeled, labeled with generalized anxiety disorder after that period. In reality, I was just exhausted. I changed my strategies, I changed my mindset, and I moved forward in life. Fast forward a few years, and I've been made uh, uh, permanent in a role, and suddenly found myself being made redundant. And a year, uh, sorry, a month later, I found myself uh, being told that the house where I was renting a room was being sold, and I'd have to move. So I'd lost my job and was about to lose the home where I was living. And as you can imagine, the plates started to spin. And I have to say that I'd moved 12 times since leaving the military, often because people were turning the room into an Airbnb rental, redeveloping, selling, or moving on. So for me, this was nearly a tipping point, and I decided that no longer would I line the pockets of other people, I would have a little adventure in the process and move into my van. And this little van became home for a six month period. And essentially I decided, I went down to B&Q and I bought some timber, some screws and some glue and some bolts. And I made a simple bed and a simple bench. And that was home for a six month period. Things I learned from this experience straight away was the power of decluttering. Decluttering declutters the mind. And being able to keep things in the van that, that had a purpose. In this modern world of ours, we tend to, to buy things we don't need and don't need, and don't need to use. So everything had a purpose in the back of the van. So I kept it important. 
And what I'll say as well is the mind and the body can adapt to any situation given the right mindset and the right strategies. From living in a trench on the Welsh hills to living in a shack by the side of a, uh, a, a dirt airstrip in Alaska or living in a snow hole in South Georgia and Antarctic or under a basher somewhere in the woods in the UK. All these places became home and it's quite straightforward. I remember being in a snow hole and getting my snow saw out and carving a little shelf in the snow hole and putting a candle inside that shelf. It made it home. When I was in the van, I went to a charity shop and I bought a, a cheap picture for three pounds. A picture of the moon over the sea to make my van into a home. Very simple and straightforward. People said to me, John, did you get lonely living in the van? I said, no, not at all. I used to go and use the laundrette to, use, to do my washing. And that laundrette I hadn't appreciated was a real hub for connection and community. And those of you that got a washing machine in the house, unless it talks back to you, you're not going to get much out of it. So for me, I found connection in other ways. I was in the back of the van one day having breakfast, and I saw this guy. I thought he was casing my vehicle. And I thought he was a bit suspicious. But we started talking to him, and it turned out he was a fellow veteran, military veteran. And we served together in Royal Engineers. And we shared the same boss. And that guy said to me that morning, he said to me, John, if you ever need a shower or a place for the night, my house is yours. Unconventional living in unconventional places leads to doors opening in unconventional places too. Keeping hygienic was important in the back of the van. There's no excuse just living in a small space not to keep hygienic. I would wash and shave in the back of the van. Sometimes I'd be on the off-peak Thames Link service coming into London to work with clients. And I used to go to the, 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 the back cubicle on the train, strip wash, and get shaved and showered. And the, th the key thing here is my clients or potential clients never knew how I was living or what I was doing. And this is important because to me, life is like an iceberg two-thirds hidden in plain sight. How often, how many people are living in adverse conditions, but we don't ask the right questions or show empathy or listen? It's important. And then some days I'd be out catching fish. You saw the kayak on the roof of the van, I'd go out catching fish sometimes, and I felt like I was doing what a human is supposed to do. I live in Hertfordshire, and I see apple trees burdened with fruit and fruit rotting on the ground. In the Western world today, we live in a wasteful society. I was going out, catching my dinner, and foraging for food in certain cases, and making the most of it. And it felt like it's real. It's what I should be doing in life. And the groin sometimes served as a, as a dinner plate. Not sure it would pass food handling certificate uh, certification, but it worked. And then one day I was coming into shore and the paddle broke. And when you live a frugal life or live a basic life, you start to adopt an improvisational mindset. And the paddle broke and I thought, well, I can't go and buy a new one. That would be cheating. So I thought, I'll go and fix it. So I went skip diving, and people thought, who's this gray-haired old, gray old bloke skip diving? And I found a broken marquee pole and some sticks, and I fixed the paddle, and it still holds firm today. When you adopt an improvisational mindset, it gives you power, self-empowerment and reward and challenge. We live in a throwaway society that often something breaks, we throw it away and we buy a new one. Living a frugal life, a basic life, is powerful and empowering. And then... One day I'm lying on the beach under a, under a, uh, a 10 pound tarpaulin because it started to rain and I had a little fire going. And I'm sat there and I'm thinking, this is real wealth. This is real wealth. All too often in our society, wealth is measured by financial success. It's measured by the things that we own. The reality is we try and buy our way into happiness in many cases. For me, real wealth comes from within and real wealth is about appreciating the things that you find around you and being able to make best use of the things that you find around you too. Everything I do is about helping people to empower themselves today. And lying there that night, the sun went down, the moon came out over the sea, and I thought, this is real wealth. You remember the picture in the van that I bought some months before I actually started my adventure, or some months before I, I uh, moved down to the sea? I was living on the streets in the van. It struck me how similar the picture was to that, the photograph from that night. You see, the moon over the water, life leaves clues. And we'd all do very well to follow those clues. Thank you very much indeed.